Hey, this is Leif Ganford. I played the cash register thief in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. Hey, this is Rich McDonald, and I play Commander David Mason on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And you're listening to Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldavar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Dory, and joining me is my co-host, Andrew. Hello. Good to have you on board for the first time. Oh, yes. It is a pleasure. Yeah. And also joining us as a very special guest, we have Rich McDonald, the, for, who did the motion capture and voice of David Mason in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. So how are you doing, Rich? Doing great. How you guys, how you guys doing? We're doing very well, thank you. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So getting right into the questions, my first question for you, Rich, is how did you first decide you wanted to get into acting? Um, that's a sort of a long process. I was in college and uh, was set up to be a computer programmer. And um, my sister had actually graduated before me with the same degree. So I got to see what she was doing out in the real world. And um, I was a collegiate athlete, so I was very active. And when I saw uh, what her life had turned out to be as far as sort of being stuck at a desk, I personally just, I shied away from it. I realized I couldn't do that. Um, for any sort of major corporation the rest of my life. So I decided to seek other choices and I uh, did a little soul searching, found out, you know, really the only thing that was making me happy was uh, playing music and watching movies. So I thought, well, hell, if I can, if I can do that and um, have the same effect on other people that the movies and music had on me, then uh, I can, I can live a happy life. So yeah, I'm currently yeah. working on that. <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, how did you get the role of David Mason? I did a I did a film called Blackjacks that it will actually be uh, it'll be coming out uh, soon, probably first part of next year, with James C. Burns who plays uh, Sergeant Frank Woods. And um, during the film, you know, he had mentioned that he was a, a major character in Black Ops One, and uh, you know, we hit it off pretty well, and and our our dynamic and relationship in the film sort of was uh, similar to uh, it had a touch of the same sort of uh, characteristics within Black Ops 2. And so he he decided to drop my name to the casting director um, once we got back. I said, great, but I, I certainly didn't hear anything for a number of months. Finally, she brought me in. I did the audition and I still didn't hear anything for another three, four weeks. And then uh, he gave me a call and said that that uh, Dave Anthony wanted to see me do a scene with James at, down at Treyarch. And um, so I went down there and did the scene and, and he had me do another scene. And about 15 minutes later, he offered me the job. So I was pretty much on cloud nine. 
Yeah, it's really cool. And I presume they were probably scenes from, you know, the first mission or first couple of missions. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, it's exciting. But, <laughs> yeah, definitely. And my third question is, had you worked with any of the cast before you worked with them on Black Ops 2? Uh, just James, just James C. Burns. And uh, that really made it an easy process. I mean, you know, it had its challenges left and right, but but it made it that extra level of fun because he, you know, in the game, he sort of he sort of has a fatherly. I mean, yes, he raised me, but he's not actually my father. But but we have that father son dynamic within the game. And we were already used to doing that from the film Blackjacks because he is my team leader within uh, blackjacks and so that same dynamic we were just able to transfer that over to the game and just build upon it so it was it was a very easy segue yeah it's really cool and definitely my fourth question is how did david mason's nickname section come about that they dave anthony was really adamant about wanting that to be left to the public um they had their own ideas they didn't even impart them to me uh basically section was you know he's he's got a very dark edge to him especially because his father was he left him when he was younger he, you know he knows his father's dead but he didn't know why and he's got all these this internal turmoil going on and uh it comes out at certain times and so they wanted to let the people know that he during his training he had snapped so many times that at one point he almost got kicked out and uh section eight and so um you know the nickname from his from his peers was section so uh, that just carried on through the game yeah it's really cool uh my last question for you is do you have any upcoming acting roles or other projects that you would like to talk about yeah we've i mean i unfortunately i can't disclose the name of the film i'm working on right now it's, it's sort of in pre-production i'm in the i'm in the training process right now for it uh, it's another action film um it's uh, I, all I can tell you is based on human trafficking, and uh, it's got some uh, very large military element within it. But um, it's it's going to be action packed. Uh, shoots here in the states, and we're hoping to we're hoping to start the the principal shooting in um, you know later this year, first part of next year. But um, yeah, just uh, keep keep an eye out, and of course as Blackjacks hits the market, check that out because James is in that as well. So, but uh, other than that, I've got to, I'm working on plugging myself back into the community. You know, I took a little break to get married and, and, uh, and go on my honeymoon. And uh, you can't exactly, you can't exactly be considered for roles while you're on your honeymoon, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't fare too well with your bride. So I'm, I'm back in action and uh, fighting for the next role. Yeah, it's really cool. We'll definitely be keeping a look out for the information on those two movies and when they come out. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Yeah. So thank you very much, Rich, for answering my questions, and I'll hand you over to Andrew now. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Right. Hi, David. Hey, how you um, doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, how are you, Andrew? <laughs> oh, I'm very good. <laughs> um, my my uh, first question for you is um. Do you, are you a gamer yourself? And uh, if so, what games do you play? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get shot down for this. I I was <laughs> somewhat of a gamer when I was younger, but I gave up the gaming about the time that Top Gun and Duck Hunt and Mike Tyson's Punch Out came out. Um, and uh, I I was sort of always tied up with sports. I played uh, soccer, football, as you guys call it. Um, and then American football, and I was uh, I was a pole vaulter, and that's what took me to college. I was a collegiate pole vaulter, um, just just very busy all the time, and I I sort of let the gaming fall by the wayside. But I didn't realize. I mean, when when James told me about you know Black Ops, I realized how popular it was, but I had no idea how addictive it is. It is mm. one of the most, if not the most, supreme. Um, game franchises ever ever put together. I mean, I I finally started to play it while we were filming, and uh, I don't even own an Xbox. I had to borrow a buddy's to start playing the game, and uh, <laughs> my wife my wife can attest to it. I would sit there for 
four or five hours and uh, we were supposed to go, you know, on a date or something. And she'd come in like, what, what are you doing? You know, I'm playing myself. Can't you see I'm playing myself? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, I tell you what, if I, uh, I'd like to make a full gaming setup at some point and uh, you know, with, with all the bells and whistles and, and uh, the, uh, what are they, the um, turtle, What's the real high-end headphones? Yeah, Tell Beach. Turtle, Turtle Beach. Tell yes, Beach I'd love to get some of those and, and set up some surround sound speakers and just have screens everywhere because it's I, I feel like it's still in my blood to be a gamer. Yeah, right. You, did, you, did you better give me your gamer tag as well? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What did you say? You, you, did you better give me your gamer tag as well? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and uh, it's sad to say that I... I'm still working on the getting proficient at the campaign on uh, on this game and and working on other games before I actually jump online because the same guy that let me borrow his Xbox he he introduced me to the multiplayer a little bit and I'm a badass in real life but I tell you what it's far from that when it comes to online I was I, was, I think I was alive for an average of about eight seconds each time so uh. I just hand over the controls and uh, work on my game a little bit. Let's just say you got killed because of camp food. <laughs> yeah, most, most probably it was because uh, I get killed by a lot of campers on Call of Duty and it drives me insane. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. They just, uh, they just, they find their spot and they wait, you know? Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah, whenever a camp is around, I just get a crossbow and then shoot where I know they and boom, easy as that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of techniques that I've got to get uh, privy to because yeah. they, they sneak up behind me. They know they know where my funnels are and, uh, you know, they're they're always they're always estimating and and uh, anticipating where I'm going to be before I can even before I can even Thanks. know where I'm going. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, another tip actually is uh, don't sprint everywhere because that's how I get killed all the time. Yeah, sprinting everywhere. Good advice. That... Yeah, I noticed that the hard way. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah uh, same. You, you tend to lose, uh, you, you tend to get a little tunnel vision when you speed up and in real mm. life and in the game. And uh, when you're when you're gonna really accelerate to one spot and they're just watching you do it, it's just it's just like shooting ducks in a barrel, you know, they're gonna get you. Yeah, totally. Um, the, my next question is, um, have you been keeping up um, with the Black Ops 2 uh, map packs at all? Uh, a little bit. I hear, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm still working on the original stuff. But, uh, you know, I hear about the the latest updates and uh, the downloadable content and, and you know. Uh, little... Vengeance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I can't you know state any details about it but i i hear how popular they get and mm. and everybody's waiting for the next one and and so forth i'm um uh, i'm currently waiting on the next game is what i, I want to see what they put together for if there's a if in, in fact there's a, a third installment i'd love to see what they do with it you know yeah of course yeah and and um my final question um is uh which voice actors slash actresses were you inspired by uh, that I worked with, or I know uh, that uh, you were inspired by, like uh, when you were younger. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I think. Yeah. Thanks, Rory. <laughs> well, you said, did you? Was the question only uh, voice actors, or were you talking about regular actors as well? Uh, you can say that as well, if, if you want okay. to. <laughs> yeah. Well. The, you know, the voice actor, I didn't, growing up, I didn't even know that, uh, you know, because all the, all the movies that I've watched were, were actually recognized the talent of the voice, unfortunately, was because I recognized the person from, from their, um, the visual content, you know, they were actually stars that crossed over. Um, I'm currently, you know, not against it. I'm just, I realize how much, there's so much uh, room for talent and uh, raw skill of people that haven't even broken out onto the, the regular film and TV screen. Um, mm. But growing up, you know, I was, I was always a fan of the people who had the signature voices, the, the Clint Eastwoods, the John Waynes, the, 
Um, you know, even even a little bit later, you get into the Russell Crowe, you can recognize his voice anywhere. Um, mm. you know, uh, Tom Hanks, he can't he can't do anything wrong when it comes to comedy and drama, as far as I'm concerned. So. No. Oh, and don't let me forget uh, Mr. Sir Anthony Hopkins. He was he's definitely an idol of mine. Oh, very good. Um, I think you've answered my questions. I will now hand it over to Rory to ask the Facebook questions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have one Facebook question, or well, technically two, but in the same line, uh, from our Facebook follower Johnny Beggs. He asked, do you ever play the Call of Duty games online? Are you any good? This sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell him, tell him not yet, not yet. I, uh, like I said, I attempted it and, um, I realized that my game was extremely subpar. So I've, I'm currently working on it. And as soon as I can consider myself on the same playing field as at least the, uh, the amateur gamer, then I'll jump online and, uh, test my skill. Yeah, definitely. That's really cool. So thank you very much for joining us today, Rich. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Absolutely. Yeah, thank- I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Rich. Yeah. All right. Take care, guys. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you. Phew, no awkward goodbyes this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, moving straight on to our next topic. Well, keeping in keeping up with the Call of Duty theme. Uh, we will be discussing our favorite and least favorite games from the season as well as then discussing what we're looking forward to in this year's Call of Duty release, Ghosts. So, Andrew, first of all, first of the three topics, favorite Call of Duty games, discuss. My um, favorite uh, Call of Duty game uh, has to be uh, Call of Duty 4. You know, um, Interesting choice. Yeah, you know, because, because uh, that was, you know, my first uh, COD game that I, I actually played, and you know, um, I you know, I went back to play like the other ones after I played the fourth one, but um, the, I you know it, it was brilliant. You know, you know with COD Four, you know, the, you know the story was brilliant. The you know the gameplay was good. The course, the course I was in now is a lot better, but you know, the, and um, the, I do kind of like. Uh, COD Five, or yeah, or World COD, at War, uh, yeah, World at War, because uh, they first d- introduced the zombies mode, and tell you what, <laughs> yeah, zombies me equals win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what's your favorite uh, 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 Call of Duty game or games? There's, there's, yeah, it's just way more than one for me. Um, I mean, I. I actually played Call of Duty from the get-go. When I was seven years old, there I was playing the original. <laughs> so, I've been around, <laughs> so I've been playing them ever since the first year they came out. And I, you probably think that makes me a major Call of Duty fan for that. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, I'm not a die-hard fan. I do admit as many flaws, but, you know, I still appreciate it as a, you know, gaming fan choice. But, yeah, the original, uh, the original Call of Duty was really good. I felt... You know, when it came out, they made a good breakthrough with, uh, you know, well, four or two games. Because, I mean, what else really was there? That we had Medal of Honor, um, but we'd only had maybe two or three releases for that. And two of, well, two of them anyway were on the PlayStation 1. And while they were fun, well, the graphics were obviously not great back then. But no. you know what I mean. But, <laughs> yeah. But Call of Duty, you know, I always think it was a breakthrough franchise for, where, for World War Two games anyway. I think, yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the reasons I prefer the originals in over the newer releases in one way is, you know, the way they weren't done so quickly, and though they found ways like, you know, spread it out. It, it, that, like there was one mission in the original one where there was this dam. Um, I can't remember what it was called, what the name of the mission was, but like basically these days, um, at the very least, you're doing a mission with two characters, you and the comrade. Uh, but usually it's a squad thing. Um, back then, in that mission, it, you were all on your own. You literally had to do the entire mission on your own, and it was yeah, it, yeah. And I mean, if you even if you didn't die, it would take a a very long time to complete the mission, even if you did yeah. die. 
exactly. I just thought, you know, that's what the, the themes the originals were great for, <laughs> that sort of thing. I, I'm not trying to downplay the newer releases, but that's one of the things I really that really got me interested in the other ones, you know. I will admit I did constantly get really angry when trying to complete that mission and then dying out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, I bet. Um, but, but, you know, like nowadays, you know, um, you know, you're gonna have like hundreds of that, you know, AI on 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 the same screen with you. you know, we have had hundreds of AIs and you know characters, you know, on the same screen, which which just shows that how far uh, technology has come mm. um, in in consoles and all this stuff. You know, the technology's gone so fast. You know. Yeah, I mean, compared to the originals, the character models just look really good now, definitely. You look smoother, and obviously now they use motion capture now as well. Yeah. Like with, what, with, like with the originals, some of the character models just look the exact same, really. But these yeah. days, you know, it, it, just g- generic soldiers even would look different, really. But, you know, I, I still think that takes away from the originals because it's just the feel of it. And United Offensive. The expansion pack to the original that was really fun as well I had the battle of the bulge you know four missions in the snow you know anything battle of the bulge layer just as pure win for me and the anything in operation market garden b-day or battle of the bulge and i will be happy well stalingrad as well but though the first few are named definitely and they had four great missions there and then they had a few missions and um, in Holland as well, which was Operation Market Garden, and um, in that one, and then as well, Sicily. And I mean, that last British mission in you know, the offensive when you're on the motorcycle, the sidecar, motorcycle, I should say, in the sidecar. That was mm. so fun. That was just <laughs> really fun. I, I mean, that, that was such a dramatic mission for you. Like that. I think one game that every Call of Duty fan likes is Call of Duty 2. That was brilliant. <laughs> I mean, 20, yeah, you know, the 27 missions of awesome, really. Because, because obviously, you know, I, I played COD 4 first, and then I went back and tried, you know, COD 2, and I loved it. You know I mean, you know, just especially like, you know, you know, we're using the old guns, you know, the Thompson and, and the, uh, the M1 and all that. You know what I mean? Some of my favourite guns they are, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but, just... I, but I'm I'm sorry, but I'll just always be in favour of World War Two guns. I mean, I just I mean, just what well, anything World War Two related, you just say World War Two history and stuff to me, and I will just go pure win. I mean, just World War Two is more my thing, especially because you know, well, my best subject is history. I just you know, I just mm. can't get enough of World War Two, really. Um, uh, but yeah. Call of Duty Three, that uh, that's no great one. Um, mm. they made a few good progresses on it that I then feel they, well, didn't keep up for the rest. Um, uh, not picking on any specific Call of Duty, it's like they they one of my favorite, two of my favorite things actually in Call of Duty uh, Three were one the ability to drive vehicles like jeeps, and then as far as I remember, they don't really use that again, and I. And I just love driving the jeeps around and going crazy with them. Um, well, did they? Uh, did they did put vehicles? Well, a vehicle in in the uh, yeah, world at war. Yeah, um, the, yeah, the tanks. Yeah, it wasn't that on? Uh, yeah, in the single player. But I'm talking about you know driving. Like we've always been able to use tanks in Call of Duty. I'm talking about any other vehicle being able to drive it. We haven't really had that in any other game except well that one well, king had it in its multiplayer but not yes really yes i had it in like two of the maps three of the maps yeah but um the also you know you know uh, in a more modern ones you know like black ops 2 for example you know do, do you know the care package um you no know, you you can get what like uh, you know one uh, helicopters and, uh, and you can actually farm around and shoot <laughs> You know I mean, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that is pretty cool. But I still would, I just want jeeps back and vehicles like that. And I just love to be able to drive a motorcycle as well. But I think, I think what I know, they didn't bring forward more that kind of annoys me is that uh, the new feature they had in Call of Duty 3 and the stayed only there is you know, 
kind of to the sky, but you know the way you have to double click the thing while you're fighting for control of a gun, you know, against German soldiers, and you yeah. have to click the buttons really fast to beat them and kill them. Yeah, I I thought that feature was really good. It really tested your speed, and then they haven't really used it again. And I thought that was a really good feature. Yeah, but um, the, all, I, the, all I can say is, you know, the two um, the all the all people that want like stuff like. You know, uh, you know, the, all of the listeners that want jeeps and helicopters and jets and that, go play Battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> um, yeah, and the two Black Ops games, I'm a huge fan of those as well. Um, I mean, you know this, I thought I was going to really dislike Black Ops 2 when we first saw the original trailer. Then when I got the game, well, rented it, I still actually have it, you know, completely bought and probably won't for a while. But you know, I rent, I rented Black Ops Two, and I absolutely loved it. It was really good. Yeah, yeah you know, they did some really good jobs on on that. You know, what I mean, you know, especially with the new and improved zombie mode from Black Ops World of War and no, Call of Duty World Black. of War and Black Ops One as well. Yeah. You know, what I mean, they made the, the ultra ultra improved version of it, and it's it's brilliant the zombies mode. Uh, and moving on from our favourite Call of Duty's, how about our least favourites? What do you think, Andrew? Or do you not have any? Oh, uh, this is this is difficult. It's quite diff- um. Nah, I can't actually, imagine that happy. <laughs> no, I'll go. probably have to say uh, Modern Warfare Two or Three. I'm not sure. It's one of them ones because you know um. I don't know. I just, I just completely agree. I just didn't like it. I just didn't really like it that much compared to like you know the COD Four and like you know Black Ops games. You know they're really good ones. Yeah. To be completely honest with you, I'm actually I don't really like the Modern Warfare series in general. I just you know I'm I'm just not too fond of it. <laughs> She'll say um you know it has its moments. They they had like a couple or uh, of good missions in each game, but that's not really good enough for me. I mean Black Ops every mission it was something different. Uh, something yeah, you know, uh, something you know. that drags you in, you know what I mean? You're a yeah. twist. Yeah, modern warfare is just like, oh, let's push it, let's just push this story along, not have anything dramatic happen, and then the last mission, the dramatic happens, while well, Black Ops, yeah. both of them had dramatic things in every mission, really, aside from one or two fails, but in modern warfare's case, there's one or two wins with a lot of fails, in my opinion. Uh, did you ever, did, there was one thing, um, you know, of the in in Call of Duty Four, the, uh, you were playing as the U.S. Marines, weren't you? And and um, the, the nuke went off, didn't it? The nuke yeah, that went was, off. That was pretty cool, but but, but you know, with every went um, the, you know, we were forward in time to uh, Modern Warfare Three, and, and we found out um, that Reznov, no, was it Reznov, no, no, Mac- uh, Makarov. Makarov, yeah, see, I yeah. think I'm going to mix Yeah, as I was saying, I think what my favourite part of Modern Warfare 3 was definitely when they did all the flashbacks, you know, basically they brought Yuri in at the start and you're basically thinking, well, what's the point of this character? I mean, they brought him in, but I haven't done anything to develop him. And then, in Blood Brothers, the mission where Sub dies as well, I mean, that was one of the great Modern Warfare missions, Blood Brothers, and they actually explain Yuri's story, you know, that was such a big mission as well, killing so, uh, that and showing you his backstory as well. It's more than what you get in most of the Modern Warfare series missions, um, and it's a mm. great backstory as well. You know, all the all this time, you know, they we thought there was a, basically a small piece to every, you know, Modern Warfare big story kind of thing. You know, oh, and you went off, it killed one of the main characters. Okay, a main character that never got developed actually. Um, and then you have the moment back years and years ago when Price sniped, uh, what is his name? Zakayev, uh, him and Zakayev's arm off and he was presumed dead. And all along we found, and then after that we found out they were there all along and that Yuri was at the airport, you know, when they executed all the civilians. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I thought that was a great, you know, nod to a previous pair to them on Warfare franchise. Um, yeah, I thought that made for a great storytelling. But for the most part, I'm not 
he would do for some on the monomorphic series as well as that. I feel for most of the characters, they really didn't develop them. I mean, for me, Ghost is probably the most overrated video game character that there is. I'm sorry, but mm. that's my honest opinion. They did. He's just there. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's. I guess you could say he's kind of like the De Boba Fett in the of Star Wars and like. Yeah, the... but at least they went back and then kind of gave Boba development um, in the E. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. But I just felt Ghost had potential, but they didn't use it. And I know when Ghost's uh, game for this year's first next, some of us believed that it would be a prequel story for Ghost, and it would actually give him some development. It actually isn't, and that might be a good thing. But at the same time, mm-hmm. I mean, Ghost was just a character they threw in there to look good, but really he just he didn't even get developed. And now, I don't care if a character looks good, but if they don't get development, then I'm just not interested, really. <laughs> That's why I don't... Did you ever Ghost got killed off in um yeah. in Mom of Ed 2 with Roach, was it? I think it was yeah, Roach by you, I guess. Yeah, got killed off, yeah. Which, which, which just sucks, because it, it yeah. could have been very good. Like, it was just... It was, it was really just a cheap death, I mean, just to get them out of the way, really. Yeah. And, you know, to bolster up Shepard as the villain of the whole Modern Warfare 2, really, it, it was just so cheap. Really. I think Modern Warfare 2 is really overrated in that regard because the storytelling, the characters, it's just, to me, it's just all awful. Um, I, I don't know if I'd say it's the worst Modern Warfare, but I definitely would say it was the least enjoyable for me and could have been the most improved upon. Um, yeah, and Modern Warfare 3 as well I just want to say it right off the bat I was not a fan of Team Metal except maybe Sandman or whoever it was I mean they, they're another case of characters that never got developed and then killed off all of a sudden I mean it shows a kind of courageous and cool ass stand they were making but I mean it was just like it's just again another example of uh, we can't do anything more with these characters let's just kill them <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean there was no story to it. And that's what Black the Black Ops race did really well. I mean, every death really had story, I mean, except for this random soldier on the left, number five, of course. But you know what I mean. All the all the named character deaths had story to them, really. I think that's yeah, what because... they really slipped up on. Yeah, you know because um... oh, it's gone. Now it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say something. It's gone. Yeah, oh no, because because um, the Modern Warfare uh, kind of like uh, trilogy, you could say, um, was uh, made by Infinity Ward, yeah. and um, the uh, Black Ops uh, were made by Treyarch. Yeah, which yeah. is two different studios, I think. If I'm correct. But at the same so... at the same time, the original Call of Duties were made by Infinity Ward, so they can't make yeah. Call of Duties. They just made a poor choice uh, regarding the Modern Warfare series. Uh, well, mm. not not that it was a bad idea, just they didn't make the most of it. They didn't, you know, use the potential as well, so to speak. But World War Two, later, I'd say the only World War Two game that kind of disappoints me is Finest Hour. I mean, it was the the mission ideas were good, but I just felt it was so different to all the other World War Two Call of Duties and maybe all the other Call of Duties as a whole. It was just, it was just. Oh, it's so hard to explain. It was just very different. Um, mm. but at the same time, it had some similarities. Like, the first Stalingrad mission was pretty much the exact same as the one first Stalingrad mission in the original. Um, mm. But the finest, uh, it could have been really good. In fact, I don't think it's bad, but it, it made in the style of other Call of Duty games, it would have been much better. But it was just very different and weird, kind of. Mm. I totally agree with you there. Yeah. I thought the British missions were pretty good, though. Um, it's like, yeah. very difficult. A um, couple of the Russian ones as well. And I think there was an American campaign. I haven't played Final Star in a while, so I forget. But I'm pretty sure it was mm. as well. But the, just the overall gameplay style was very different. And I don't think that really suited well. Um, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> moving on from. Uh, favorite and least favorite games. 
how about we throw in another one in there and ask what were some of our favorite levels from the whole Call of Duty franchise? So maybe top three levels of all, what, five? Oh, God. Um... I think for Kuta is a no-brainer. That one's definitely one of the best Call of Duty missions in all time from Black Ops 1. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was just so much fun. It pretty much... Pretty much had something for all fans in that mission. I think that's what I loved about it the most. Um, it had compelling storyline. I um, mean, prison guards. It had it got you to use a whole arsenal of weapons. You know, you start with a pistol. You get a shotgun. You get a uh, like uh, the death machine, which I guess you could say is a really rapid machine gun kind of weapon. Yeah, um, minigun. And then at the uh, and, and then at the end of it, and this was what I loved most because it reminded me of the mission and I spoke about from United Fence of earlier, the riding the motorcycles bit. I just loved that. I mean, as if the mission wasn't great enough already. And that just getting to yeah. these motorcycles again gave it completely a ten out of ten for me. That was what it that is easily for Kuta, there's no way around it. It has to be one of the best poetry missions out there. Maybe not the best, but certainly among the best. Um, yeah. And I think, um, going back to other countries, I think in Call of Duty 2, um, the first B-Day mission where you're climbing up the, uh, you know, the hill, I think that was just really cool. And I love the fact that they're brilliant. Uh, when one of the American soldiers gets shot and he falls and hits the one right above you, and they both fall, uh, uh, and they both fall within inches of knocking you down with them. That was a really well done one. And the mission itself it was really fun yeah. as well. Um, yeah. I mean, what do you think before I name my third? Oh, um, it's it's very difficult. Very. Yeah very difficult to name ones I like because because I like pretty much you know a lot of them but I can't pick out a few because mainly I don't know the names of all the missions <laughs> well, if, if you can if you explain basically what happens I'm sure I could fill you in on the name oh god um uh... do you want me to name my third while you think about it yeah yeah you're yeah, gone yeah yeah name, name, I, name I, think, I think that Another easy option as to be in the best three is Suffer With Me from Black Ops 2. That was, that was just a really well done mission. It was, had great writing, great character development, and lots of twists and turns. I mean, who else would... I mean, who, I'll see if you have read online um, before watching the, playing the mission, I should say. Who would have actually guessed you were, as Frank Woods, you were sniping Alex Mason? I mean, I remember... Yeah, no. I remember watching multiple walkthroughs and everyone was like, oh god, I didn't realise that was going to be Mason and I just sniped him about five times in the head. And yeah, so me. I was, I was just thought, okay, I'll just kill this guy. Yeah. And then I, mean, I was like, shit. I mean, to be honest with you, I, even, I actually did the description before I played it, but even so, I actually was pretty sure it was Mason anyway, because, I mean, if you actually think about it, the trousers are the exact same as Mason's. Okay, maybe Menendez could wear the same trousers as Mason, but it was definitely yeah. the same trousers Mason was wearing early in the mission, but it was definitely a big twist, and unless you have a really good eye for details like that, I'm not saying I do, because, you know, I, I read the spoilers anyway, but it was just... A, mm. It was a great mission. It had lots of twists and turns, and the music was done to perfection as well. And, and we find out that Hudson is a traitor as well. I mean, that was built up, and then it came to a head there as well. And, yeah. And then arguably the most gruesome death in Call of Duty as well, with Hudson as well. You know, and Men oh, yeah. Yeah, when he's stuck <laughs> with Chad Menendez, shotguns, both his, his shotguns, him and both knees. And you just see them meet there, and then he grabs his pendant and basically cuts Hudson's throat open before kicking him down. I mean, that was well, actually, you you say about gruesome deaths. Um, um, you know, um, oh, what's the villain from uh, Modern Warfare Three again? Makarov. Yeah, his yeah. death was yeah. brutal. Yeah, that was pretty brutal as well. It wasn't I don't think it was quite as brutal because you know you don't really see much of scarring or blood if you get what I mean. Um, no, but, like, but he strangles him with that yeah. um, the wire and then hangs him. 
Yeah. And then it has a casual smoke. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But what about your missions now that you've had some time to think about them? Oh. Um. Well, I I can tell you one of my least favourite missions actually. Okay, okay with that. Um. Uh. No Russian. Uh, uh, from uh, one of my Very interesting. Two. Yeah. The optional mission, the one you could skip if you Yeah, I, I, you know, you know, you know, I thought we'd do it, just to see what it does. And then I was just, just killing all these people, and, I'm, and you know, to be honest, I, I, I didn't shoot anyone. You felt like a, you felt like a murderer, basically. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, that, that no Russian mission, it was never meant to have story to it. It was just meant to be someone for just a mission for just anyone who wants to go in and shoot people up. You know, it was it wasn't really part of the storyline. I mean, with Modern Warfare Three, what they did brilliantly was they found a way to get a bit of storyline in there with Yuri. Uh, but otherwise, there wasn't really much storyline at all, aside from killing off uh, uh, here the, a secret agent, Alan. the secret agent when at the uh... yeah private Allen. And um, they basically gave him a couple of missions and then killed him off there. But you know, with that, um, it is kind of to do with the story because because obviously the, that's what kind of starts off, you know, uh, it's what the Russia US kind of Makarov, like yeah. conflict and yeah. Makarov, yeah, yeah, yeah it kind of starts what, a conflict. Yeah, it's what gets people, you know, taking note of Makarov and really he could be a threat. But it really, it's for me, it's they could have done that so many other ways. They didn't. Yeah, they just, they, I still firmly believe they just threw it in to make, you know, those who just want to shoot people up happy. Because there are other ways they could have made, you know, Makarov a threat, but, eh, you know. But I, I will admit, though, I I will admit, though, I really liked Makarov's line at the end of the mission, though, <laughs> before he shoots Alan. This was no message. This is a message. And then shoots Alan mm. in the head. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty cool. Um, uh, but anyway, have you thought of any favourite missions at this stage? Um, um, oh, dang it. Um, actually, um, 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 the FNG on uh, COD Four was pretty good. You know, you, you know, um, because obviously you had that massive bit of land. You know, uh, yeah, they had the uh, obstacle course, and you could like, you know, just like free roam around it for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think, seeing as I might as well give some props to Modern Warfare, one mission I definitely could get addicted to is the cliffhanger mission in Modern Warfare 2. I mean, that was oh, yeah. so much fun. Yeah, I mean, you get sneaking around and then the snowmobiles as well. I mean, uh, that, that's, oh, that's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, just riding <laughs> on those is just so much fun. Um. Uh, but again, like I said, Modern Warfare it has very few good missions, but those it does have are really good in my opinion, uh, for mm. different reasons. Um, yeah, I think I think that's all the missions we're gonna describe uh, or name today. So, uh, thoughts on Call of Duty Ghost so far? Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, um, you know, um, I'm I'm mostly looking for the multiplayer really because because obviously the day of you know, they've got like, you know, uh, you can lean now, you know, lean around corners. So it's a bit more realistic. Um, you know, uh, ca- uh, character customization in multiplayer now. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, um, you know, uh, the story looks pretty good. You know, I'm, I, you know, I want to find out a bit more about the story because obviously it's some kind of event happened and obviously yeah. the US. Army is pretty much in ruin. The whole, <laughs> what else? The whole countries you? and yeah. You know what I mean, so you know, it'll, it'll be very interesting to see what what happens. Yeah, yeah. I really liked in that No Man's Land mission gameplay, the way you know the characters come across this building, which is basically on the edge of a cliff. And they like come across it from a distance, and then in the front of their own eyes, they just see it collapse with a really, yeah. good, you know. Collision. I thought that was pretty cool, and you know, and I'm not a huge fan really of some of the underwater missions, but I think Into the Deep does look pretty cool. I mean, the way they've detailed so well, you can really like. It's almost as if you can really feel the you know and sea animals going right past you, like the fish. And I thought, I think I saw a shark in there as well. 
so it's definitely a lot more realistic for underwater missions now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah. it's a it's a completely different new engine. Yeah, yeah. See. I just don't want to imagine if that shark is actually able to eat you alive. <laughs> like, uh, ah, hi, mate. Uh... <laughs> uh, oh, please don't eat me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but. I, that would be pretty dang cool, though. At the same time, really creepy. I mean, we've already got uh, Fair Cry, isn't it, for that? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of course. You know, like lions and stuff. Yeah, all sorts kind of, of wild pretty... animals. Yeah, um, but yeah, keeping on ghosts, um, the story does it, essentially. But, I mean, again, I was definitely not impressed by the original trailer. You know, the, I mean, for, the fact is, when the original trailer came out, I was thinking... With every shot that went by, this does not look like Call of Duty. This does not like yeah. look like Call of Duty. Yeah, the same. Yeah. This does not look like Call of Duty. And then only the last shot of the entire trailer looked like Call of Duty as we knew it, with all those you know kind of commando guys, I guess you could call them, or special yeah. forces. I mean, that was a cool shot at the end, but, but the rest of the trailer was terrible. But since then, I do like it now. And the fact that you get to have a dog as a companion now, um, and yeah, like, that that's really a great addition as well. Now you don't. Now you don't just have to kill them. And I hope. What? Well, you know. Um. Yeah. The, um the also, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, the, I, I've actually looked at um some uh, comparisons between the, the, the you know the dogs from Black Ops Two and and the dogs from Ghost. Yeah. And tell you what, it looks a, a ten times more realistic now. The, and the also um the. Dead, the uh, character models as well, they're, they're um, a lot more realistic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so... I definitely agree. And it'll be interesting to see what story they have because they promised that this Call of Duty Ghost would be a very emotional story uh, for the characters. So I'm very interested to see what they can do with that because I thought Black Ops 2 was pretty darn emotional in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. I just have to wait and see, I guess, and see what comes out of. Uh, Call of Duty Ghost, but I, I'm definitely looking forward to a lot more than I was when the first announcement came out. I may just be tempted to rent it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's all we have to say on Call of Duty, would you say? Would you agree? Yeah, so we have actually spoken for this for like half an hour now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole podcast until now really has been Call of Duty related, so... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So moving on away a little bit from Call of Duty, well, actually completely away from Call of Duty, but onto something else war related that has zombies. The Walking Yay. Dead TV series. Um, I know Andrew has also wanted to discuss this topic. So we have three new characters confirmed to be coming to The Walking Dead in season four. Um, and I've got the character names here for a couple of descriptions. Um, first of all, I think this uh, first one is meant to be a main character coming in from the comic books and maybe that's a, some other completely new character coming in, I could be wrong um, and this character's name is Don, who apparently sounds like Herschel, if Herschel was crankier and two-legged, so <laughs> yeah so, oh, I, God. so I predict he's gonna clash a cut on a couple of occasions with some of the other main characters I presume, I think this is the yeah, yeah. Oh, now I remember. There's another character coming in is it called from the comments called Bob Stukey. Is that the actor's name? Um, I'm, yes, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe it's four, maybe it's three. I don't know. Uh, but Andrew kept telling me, and he watches The Walking Dead a lot more than I do, and follows the news a lot more than I do. So, put your fingers at him. <laughs> um. Anyway, the next character is Laura, a single mom and ex-nurse who is a quite as strong as she first appears. So I'd say that means she's got some kind of emotional storyline to her, I guess. Um, yeah, would you agree? Yeah, um, yeah, uh, um, see there, uh, it says obviously who isn't quite as strong as she first appears. But that uh, could mean that she puts on a brave face. But yeah. you know, really, like uh, the inside, uh, her emotions are eating at her. If you know what I mean. Yeah, like what her, her whole family is like walkers at this stage or something or something like. That. Well, you people know, kind of like Rick because 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 Rick went for that, you know, uh, 
bit obviously where um no when obviously, obviously Laurie died. Spoilers. <laughs> um well it, well yeah. Um yeah, um he went through like this uh, really depressive state, didn't he? And and these emotions were all over the place. Yeah. And obviously, you know, you know when then that 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 group at first wandered straight to the prison, he he kicked them out, didn't he? Because obviously um he had kind of like a you know uh, he d- imagined Laurie standing up you know was standing there because yeah. he he kind of freaked out so they they went out the, but obviously when obviously the governor oh another spoiler the, uh, when the governor attacks the prison and and um obviously they you know don't go with him back i know because they stay at the the, the uh, little town, don't they? While the governor and that come to the prison, and and yeah, that's when the governor uh, kills his army, doesn't he? He, he just yeah. executes them. Like, the that as well, to be honest, wasn't it? Yeah. It was... yeah. I Did thought and... I thought it was even more brutal when later on you actually find that already they've attracted Walker wildlife. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, yeah, well, uh, a very emotional bit. Um, obviously, season three as well. The, you know, uh, was obviously when when uh, Mel. Mel. You know, yeah, Mel. Yeah, said Mel. I think <laughs> said no, Mel. Not you. Kind of say, say it more like Mel. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. Mel. yeah. Spoiler. Like Mel. Mel died. <laughs> spoiler. Alert, spoiler. Alert. Uh, yeah. Um. Well, obviously the governor kills. Yeah. Well. And then Daryl kills him later as a zombie. Yeah, you know that I, I actually cried that because it was pretty emotional. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Daryl, because Norman, Norman Reedus. Reedus. Yeah, the acting from Norman Reedus was really, you know, very amazing in that scene. Amazing, yeah. Because yeah. because obviously you know obviously Mel has been like the you know um, the big bad brother kind of thing that and. <laughs> With Daryl being the youngest, he he gets intimidated by you know um, his older brother. Yeah. Of course, so when he you know um, killed him, you know killed Mel, um, he you know a little is is a you know um, anger out on him because because of the it's been bottled up for years because of how he's been treated by by his brother. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. but getting back to. <laughs> <laughs> the topic right. on hand with the three new characters coming to The Walking Dead. The last character, another female character, is Melody. Uh, she is described as just one of the guys, kind of gal, in her twenties. So that's interesting. I yeah, think quite a young character then, kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. kind of young. You know, it could be unpredictable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah. I think I think she's probably have the feeder character we can least comment on based on that description, really. Yeah. yeah. But it's still pretty cool. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how you know important these characters will be. I mean, I presume if they're big you know, enough, since like these, they're going to be either main characters or recurring characters at least. Uh, yeah. And then other characters we've known who have been recurring for a while will be, you know, more important this season, like Beth Green, for one example. And I think Karen, uh, Noah's mother, and one of Woodley's seasons, I think is becoming more important this in season four as well, but I could be wrong. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's definitely a lot but, more main characters now, though, even though a few of them have died off. Did you ever say that, though? Um... I think what would be you know, a, a, a huge a talking point in season four will be like you know a, a Rick's relationship yeah, with Carl. with Carl. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because because of the Carl is kind of like you know Turning kind of between his. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, his yeah. emotions are twisted. So so it could be like the next governor or the next Rick. If you know what yeah. I mean, or or a mix of both. Because because of where he's been, obviously. You know, he's he's a young boy. You know, he's looking for his. Yeah, he's a young boy from independence. Young, yeah, young boy thrown into a dark world, really, and that's not really a good thing, as Carol shows. Uh, yeah, especially when he executes, you know, the guy in the last episode of season. Yeah. When he's trying to hand over the gun, 
I mean, I will admit, I will admit though that got the kid he executes uh, was kind of shrewd. I mean, how simple can it be to drop your gun? I mean, don't try handing it over. Just drop it, and then you're safe. And he tries to hand it over, and boom. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, I was actually, actually very shocked at that. I was, you know, I was shocked, at that, oh, you know, kind of thing, you know, a gasping moment because it was quite a shock, you know, yeah. for Carl to just do that. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially with his first human kill as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think we should wrap this up about now. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So make sure to check out our YouTube channels. The podcast is www.youtube.com slash users slash everything geek cast. Mine is www.youtube.com slash users slash separate destroyers. Andrew's is www.youtube.com slash users slash great gamer reviews 94. And check out Rich on IMDb, the Internet Movie Database, www.imdb.com slash name slash nm. One seven eight two seven two three. So geeks out, everyone.